Small World, the world of informative flashcards. Flashcards and Understanding the Self Part 1 Course Description of Subject, Understanding the Self The course is intended to facilitate the exploration of the issues and concerns regarding self and identity to arrive at a better understanding of one's self. It strives to meet its goal by stressing the integration of the personal with the academic, contextualizing matters discussed in the classroom and in the everyday experiences of students, making for better learning, generating a new appreciation for the learning process, and developing a more critical and reflective attitude while enabling them to manage and improve their selves to attain a better quality of life. The course is divided into three major parts. The first part seeks to understand the construct of self from various disciplinal perspectives, philosophy, sociology, anthropology, and psychology, as well as the more traditional division between the East and the West, each seeking to provide answer to difficult but essential question, what is the self? and raising, among others, the question, is there even a construct of the self? The second part explores some of the various aspects that make up the self, such as the biological and material up to and including the more recent digital self. The third and final part identifies three areas of concerns for young students, learning, goal-setting, and managing stress. It also provides for the more practical application of the concepts discussed in this course and enables them the hands-on experience of developing self-help plans for self-regulated learning, goal-setting, and self-care. This course includes mandatory topics on family planning and population education. CMO number 20 S.2013 Socrates' Philosophical Perspective of Self According to Socrates, the self is synonymous with the soul. An unexamined life is not worth living. He believes that every human possesses an immortal soul that survives the physical body. Carl Rogers' Philosophical Perspective of Self According to Carl Rogers, Self-concept refers to how people think about, evaluate, or perceive themselves. Carl Rogers splits the idea of self-concept into three different components, namely 1. Self-image 2. Self-esteem and 3. The Ideal Self St. Augustine's Philosophical Perspective of Self St. Augustine, the self, has an immortal soul. St. Augustine noted that the body is united with the soul as a whole, and not separated. He is the one who said, I am doubting, therefore I am. Plato's Philosophical Perspective of Self Plato, the self is an immortal soul. For Plato, there are three elements of the soul. Reason Physical appetite Spirit or passion Reason is the ability of the self to think critically and make wise decisions. Physical appetite is the basic needs of a person, hunger, thirst, and sexual desires. Lastly, spirit or passion is composed of the basic emotions that the self encounters. Aristotle's Philosophical Perspective of Self Aristotle, the soul, is the essence of the self. For Aristotle, the main goal of the self is to lead a good, flourishing, and fulfilling life. 
René Descartes' Philosophical Perspective of Self René Descartes, I think therefore I am. For René Descartes suggests that there are two dimensions of the self, the self as a thinking entity and the self as a physical body. He also emphasized on the saying, I think therefore I am which means that a rational thinking person and being self-conscious is the proof that there is a self. Gilbert Ryle's Philosophical Perspective of Self Gilbert Ryle, the self is the way people behave. For Gilbert Ryle, the self is best understood as a pattern of behavior the capacity of a person to act and make a move in certain ways and conditions. Maurice Merleau-Ponty's Philosophical Perspective of Self Maurice Merleau-Ponty, the self is embodied subjectivity. For Maurice Merleau-Ponty, all the knowledge about the self is based on the phenomena of experience. It means that the self is a product of the past experiences that he had, and he builds up his identity through all those experiences in the past in which a person made decisions and such. Paul Chuchland's Philosophical Perspective of Self Paul Chuchland, The Self is the Brain for Paul Chuchland, the eliminative materialism or the idea of the self is inseparable from the brain and the physiology of the body, the self is the brain. John Locke's Philosophical Perspective of Self John Locke, the self is consciousness. For John Locke, Conscious awareness and memory of precious experiences are the keys to understanding his self. He said that the fact that the person is a thinking entity, reasonable and reflecting on its identity, then there is a self. Immanuel Kant's Philosophical Perspective of Self We Construct the Self For Immanuel Kant the people are the ones to create their own self. The self constructs its own reality, which actively produces a world that is predictable to him, her. David Hume's Philosophical Perspective of Self For David Hume, there is no self if a person carefully examines himself through the method of introspection. The self is just a result of the humanistic imagination and thoughts that build up a person's characteristics. Self, Society, and Culture The self is commonly defined by the following characteristics, separate, self-contained, independent, consistent, unitary, and private. According to Stevens, the self has always unique and has its own identity. One cannot be another person. Even twins are distinct from each other. The self is capable of morphing and fitting itself into any circumstances it finds itself in. Every self has two faces, according to Marcel Moss. According to Marcel Moss, every self has two faces. A. Person and B. Moi. Person, on the other hand, is composed of the social concepts of what it means to be who he is. For example, to live in a particular institution, a particular family, a particular religion, a particular nationality, and how to behave given expectations and influences from others. Moi refers to a person's sense of who he is, his body, and his basic identity. The self, according to George H. Mead. According to Mead, the self is made up of two components, the I and me. 
Me represents the expectations and attitudes for others, which is organized into a social self. The I is the response to the me, or the person's individuality. It is the essence of agency in human action. The self is developed through three, three, activities. A. Language B. Play and C. Game His work developed symbolic interaction theory, which is now a major framework within sociology. Sociological Perspective of the Self Sociological perspective the self is a relatively stable set of perceptions of who we are in relation to ourselves, others, and to social systems. The self is socially constructed in the sense that it is shaped through interaction with other people. The three main sociological perspective of self these three theoretical orientations are 1. Structural functionalism 2. Symbolic interactionism and 3. Conflict perspective What is meant by structural functionalism? Structural functionalism holds that human societies tend to evolve toward increased differentiation in which institutions become increasingly specialized in the functions they perform. What is Symbolic Interactionism? Symbolic Interactionism is a theoretical perspective in sociology that addresses the manner in which society is created and maintained through face-to-face, -face, repeated, meaningful interactions among individuals. What is the conflict perspective? Conflict perspective, a perspective in the social sciences that a. emphasizes the social, political, or material inequality of a social group, b. critiques the broad socio-political system, or c. otherwise detracts from structural functionalism and ideological conservatism. Two Anthropological Perspectives of the Self 1. Egocentric, a concept of the self, where the self is seen as an autonomous and distinct individual. 2. Sociocentric, according to this view, there is no intrinsic self that can possess enduring qualities. What is the self as cognitive construct? In cognitive psychology, the self is understood as contextual, or ecological, intertwining cognitive capacities with social experiences, and Bernard's analysis affirms the novel's narrative where the self develops through cognitive and cultural interconnections. Examples Perception Recognition Judgment Conceptualization Language Reason Planning Learning and Development The Self According to Eastern and Western Philosophy According to Eastern Philosophy, the Self as an essence does not exist and this is due to our ignorance of the true nature of the world. According to Western philosophy, the self does exist, but the views on the topic are pluralistic.